Let's take a look at the first isometry. The first isometry is known as a translation, which is just like you're sliding the figure across the plane by some translation vector. And we'll look at an example. So basically this quadrilateral A, B, C, and D is gonna shift somewhere in this plane. It's just gonna slide somewhere. And so that what you'll see is that the order of the points don't change because it's known as a direct isometry. So by that, I mean the orientation. So you see A, B, C, and D are going clockwise around this figure. And when we translate it, it will stay clockwise. So let's look at an example. So here you can see the translation. So the whole figure has shifted to the right three and down two. So one, you just, all you have to do is count the boxes, one, two, three, and down two. And sometimes you'll see it in notation form. Well, they'll say uh, translation to the right three and down two would look something like this. It would be T three comma negative two. And what you're doing is you're just adding three to the X value and subtracting two from the Y value. So that's all you're doing. Um, it's just a translation, it's just a sliding of the figure. And all you'll notice that these points stay in the same order, right? A, B, C, D is going clockwise around the figure. And then this is A prime, that's what we call A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. That's going clockwise around the figure as well. And when I say a distance preserving map, distance preserving, meaning the distance between the points on the figure. So the distance between A and B, here is two units. Here, A prime to B prime is two units. So all of these distances are the same. So that just means the figure is the same size and the same shape. So that's a translation. Next, we're gonna look at rotations. So rotations, Generally what we look at, we look at rotations of 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. Usually we rotate the figure counterclockwise. It should tell you like this is counterclockwise, this would be clockwise. So if it says rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, or sometimes you'll see it as capital R, 90 degrees, that means 90 degrees counterclockwise. So if I rotate it 90 degrees, that's a 90 degree rotation. And what you can see from the original figure here, the order of the points, A, B, C, D, is going clockwise. And same here, if this were A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, still going clockwise. And then this is where they would end up over here. And then we could look at, say, 180 degrees. We could look at 270 degrees. And then you could get back to 360 degrees. So I'm gonna show you how to use patty paper for these rotations, because patty paper is much more useful because what I was just doing, just by turning my paper, is only useful if I'm rotating about the origin, which is this point zero zero. But say I wanted to rotate it about like this point E, then that's slightly different. And that's where patty paper or tracing paper can be really helpful. So let's take a look at that. So here I just traced the figure and you'll see it. I'm gonna just play it right now. So it looks like I'm having some issues with the audio here. So I'll just do a little quick voiceover. So it's very important that you actually trace the X and Y axis like I did because that'll help me show the degrees of rotation. So if I can rotate it 90 degrees, and then I can see how the X and Y axis line up for a 90 degree rotation, and then I can see where all of the coordinates go. So that's where my A prime is gonna go, that's the X and Y for my A prime. My B prime, that's my X and Y coordinates for B prime. And same for C prime, that's my X and Y coordinates for C prime and D prime. So that's a 90 degree rotation. And then I'm gonna rotate it just another 190 degrees, which is 180 degrees total. So there's my A prime is gonna have X and Y coordinate there. B prime, X and Y coordinate there. C prime, X and Y coordinate there. D prime, X and Y there. And then I can put my pencil right there on the origin. 
zero, zero, and rotate it another 90 degrees. So that's 270 degrees total from the first image, the pre-image. So that's my A and B. My C is going to be there, and D prime is going to be there. So A prime, C prime, and D prime, and if you notice, the order of the points doesn't change when you do a rotation. That's very, very important. Now that's great, um, but the reason patty paper is so good is I can actually use it to rotate about any point. So I'm going to rotate it about this point E here. And so I'm just going to note on the patty paper where E is. I'm going to mark it. And then I'm going to mark it with a little cross or a little kind of mini X and Y axis. And the reason for that is it makes it a lot easier for me to see where the rotations are. So I'm going to go ahead and put the center of my pencil, my pencil right there on the point of rotation. There's a 90 degree rotation. 180 degree rotation is right there. And so I can easily see how those line up perfectly. And there's my A coordinate, my A prime. It's going to be my X and Y. And then my B prime is X and Y. C prime, X and Y. And D prime, X and Y. And then so you can just note them down, write them down on some paper somewhere else, and then mark them on your graph. And notice the order of the points. The order of the points are always going in the same direction with a rotation. So A, B, C, and D were going clockwise in the original pre-image, and they're still going clockwise in this image as well. So there's my X and Y for the 270 degree rotation. B prime, C prime, and D prime, X and Y coordinates. And then I can rotate it back to the or original figure. So that would be a 360 degree rotation. So those are rotations. Hope that helps. So reflections are known as opposite isometries. And so we're gonna go ahead and label these points and make it easier for us. So give me one sec here. So I've labeled my points. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reflect this over the line x equals one. And so remember vertical lines have an undefined slope and they're always x equals something. I used to always mix that up in geometry because it's kind of the opposite of the y-axis. So this is x equals one. Basically all of the x-coordinates along this line are one. So if I want to reflect it over that line, all I have to do is just count the number of boxes to the line of reflection so one, two, and then I'm gonna go that exact amount across the line, one, two. So that's where my C prime is gonna end up, right there. I'm just gonna go ahead and mark that. And then A prime is gonna be one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's one, two, three, five, one, two, three, four, five. And then B prime is one, two, three, one, two, three. So I can go ahead and draw in those lines. So, so here you can see we have A prime, B prime, C prime. It's been reflected over this line here. Notice the order of the points. Here, they're going clockwise. Here, A prime, B prime, C prime is going counterclockwise. So if I kind of draw in the arrows, it's going this way, right? And notice these are going this way. So here's a video of this. I just want to show you the animation of this reflection. It's just getting reflected over that line. So we'll look at two more examples, and then hopefully this will help you understand all of these reflections. So we'll look at one over a horizontal line. So this is over the line one, two, three, four, the line y equals four. So this is the line y equals four. So if I, I'm just gonna do the exact same thing I did last time, except I'm gonna go across this horizontal line. So I'm gonna go one, 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 two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's where the points are gonna end up, just down here. You can see the animation. We're just flipping it 
right over that line. The next one we're going to look at is over a diagonal line. They can be a little trickier, so here we go. So if we reflect it over a diagonal line, what's it going to look like? Well, it's the same thing. You're just going to have to count the number of boxes, but diagonally. And remember, the diagonal distance is not the same as the horizontal distance, but as long as I go the same number of diagonal boxes, it's okay. One, two, one, two. So that's going to end up there. One, two, three, one, two, three. That's going to end up there. One, two, three, four, and a half. One half. One, two, three, four. So that's going to end up there. So let's take a look at that animation. So that's that diagonal reflection. So you can also use patty paper for reflections. It's super easy to just flip those over an axis and maybe I'll show you an example of that next. So let's take a look at reflections using patty paper. So I've traced the image and you can see that the image now if I reflect it over the y-axis, notice that the order of the points are going to go in the opposite direction. So that's the key to spotting a reflection, is if you notice that, like looking in the mirror, and I'm going to reflect that over now the x-axis, if you look in the mirror, your letters on your shirt are going to go backwards. Same for a reflection on the coordinate plane. So if the points were going clockwise, they would go counterclockwise. Now I'm actually going to try and reflect this Instead of over the x and y axis, I'm going to reflect it over the lines, the vertical line, x equals negative 2. And then I can then reflect it over that horizontal line, which is y equals 4. And that one's interesting because notice that some of the points go on one side versus the other. And it's just as simple as just counting the boxes. You see that C went from one side of the line of reflection to the other. And actually, that B didn't even move. It stayed on the line of reflection. So, hope that helps. Let me know.